Trading 360. It's time for our 360 round. I want to talk all about EVs and lithium, too. Dryden Pence is with us, Chief Investment Officer of Pence Capital Management, and Seth Goldstein, Equity Strategy strategist, energy and resources at Morningstar. Thank you so much for being with us. I'll start with you, Dryden. You know, you know, I keep asking, are EVs still hot? Um, Hertz just had a change in the C-suite because they were betting on EVs and a lot of Teslas and now changing that and use it, selling off those Teslas and going to use that to buy combustible cars. Once again, they said that it was high operating costs, EV demand wasn't so great, um, had been waning, I guess, and also had some safety issues. How do you feel about EVs overall, Dryden Pence? Well, overall, we're still very supportive about EV, both in the electric vehicle space in and of itself. And then, you know, when you take a, also look at, at, at hybrid technologies. So I think that it's very important for us to recognize that this is a natural progression of adoption of new technology. The early adopters have pretty much done it, right? So you had the wave of people come in early, but now you have the, the kind of secondary adopters and the market's maturing. Uh, obviously Hertz ran into a big problem and probably a bad corporate decision because there's not enough infrastructure throughout the country to do it. But if you take a look at California, that has a lot more infrastructure. 25% of the sales uh, of cars are EVs. So it's as this infrastructure spreads out across the nation that, and, and indeed the world that we're going to continue to see this growth. And, you know, 42%, uh, you know, or a lot of companies, countries are pushing, uh, you know, EV globally. So when you see these phase-outs coming, we see adoption in various countries. We think long-term, uh, EV market is still very, very strong, but we've just seen this wave of early adopters, and now we're going to kind of modulate as we move through it. So we think it's a long-term trend that's here to yeah. stay. It's not going away. Yeah. And Seth, you're on the same page. You said 40% adoption by the year 2030, right? That's right. I mean, when we look at our cost and function framework, we, we tend to think of EV adoption as, you know, having an early market and then a mature mass market. And in order for EVs to win consumers over in the mass market where consumers are very practical with their purchases, they need to have the same cost as a internal combustion engine and there needs to be the same function. So long range, at least 300 miles, there needs to be the availability of chargers in a particular region. We've seen that happen in China where there's been a massive build out of high, high power chargers. And even though the subsidy expired in 2022, EVs still grew rapidly in 2023. The U.S. is a little bit behind, Europe is a little bit behind China, and so we think those markets will get there, but it's just going to take some more time for there to be more affordable vehicles to hit the market so consumers have more options in those lower price segments and for the fast charger to get built out along highways and in cities. I mean, just the growth projection feels fast. Is it, Seth, because right now you're talking about 40 percent. You said 20 percent growth for 2024. I mean, no one I know is itching to buy an EV. I had 400 people at my wedding. I don't know anybody who's saying I can't wait to buy an EV um, this year. I work on the floor of the stock. Exchange. I just am not hearing it. Um, I'm sure it's there. I believe you when you say 20 percent growth of e in 2024. I just don't know how you're going to get to 40 percent. What are we at? Not even 5 percent adoption right now. How are we going to get there? So for for 2023, the U.S. had about seven and a half percent battery electric vehicle adoption. Globally, that was more like 12 percent due to much higher adoption rates in China and Europe. We see those markets continuing to lead the way, and we think China will be at 60 percent by 2030. Uh, Europe will be at 50 percent, so above the global average, the U.S. will get in line to 40 percent. But in the in the near term, in 2024, the bulk of growth will come from China and Europe, where we see more affordable vehicles, we see more see. charging infrastructure along major highways. And so yeah. the U.S. will continue to be a lagger in the near term, but will catch up uh, in the coming years as the charges are built out. Yeah. Yeah, and I want to talk about Albemarle and Lithium Argentina, some names you're watching, Seth. But just quickly, Dryden, which names do you think are best performers? Like, for example, Tesla, which has been down this year and the worst performer in the S&P. Do you think that's, op you know, the opportunity is there? Or are you looking at Rivian or Polestar or Lee or what? Are any of these buys in your minds quickly 
Dryden Pence? Well, well, I, th I think more importantly is to look in the components of the various cars. So it's not just the brands itself, but all the ones supporting them. I know you're going to talk about lithium here in a few minutes. But also, I think, as you mentioned, Tesla, it certainly has been pulled back. But it still becomes the dominant player in this. And you're going to see other companies go through and, and you're going to begin to see, I think, this adjustment period. So where if we don't pick one superstar at this moment in this space, we think the entire industry is just going to go through a maturing process. And we've got to look for the companies that are grabbing the, the, the greater profits of it. So while Tesla has been certainly uh, heavily affected on this, we're not, uh, we're not overly negative on the name. And I think that we just have to recognize that it's not just the brands of the car but it's all the down trace of the various companies that are going to be involved in uh, the engineering and the yeah. okay. uh, you know, building okay. out of the infrastructure uh, as we run through this. Okay. I'm going to, I want to hear Albemarle and Lithium Argentina. These are real picks and I want our viewers to have something to sink their teeth into. Seth? So lithium prices have fallen over 80% since late 2022 when they hit an all-time high, but it hasn't been due to slowing EV sales growth. It's been largely due to inventory destocking among battery producers. As the destocking has ended, we've started to see spot prices rise in China, and we forecast lithium prices will rise. And so our, our top picks are Albemarle, which has three of the best lowest cost lithium resources and lithium Argentina, who was just spun off of lithium Americas, has one uh, resource in production, a second resource on development that we think will be two low cost resources once they're fully ramped up. So we think these are the two best stocks that are positioned to benefit the most from rising lithium prices throughout 2024 and beyond. Thank you both, Dryden Pence, Pence Capital Management, Seth Goldstein of Morningstar. Glad to see you both on this Monday. Thank you. And thank